For the first time, Ukrainian fighters fired two Atoms missiles at the military training ground where soldiers of the occupying Russian army were trained in the Zaporizhia region. As a result, a large number of people died at the training ground where there were dozens of soldiers. It is reported that this is at least the sixth time in the last eight months that Russian troops have gathered in the open air to conduct exercises. The number of personnel losses is not specified, but the Forbes publication notes in its article that they could be catastrophic. It should be noted that the attack with Atoms missiles is carried out by means of HIMARS rocket volley. So far, the invaders' training grounds have been repeatedly hit by MLRS missiles through this system. Illegal Starlink terminals from the American company SpaceX are contributing to Russia's advance on the battlefield in Ukraine, particularly during the seizure of Volodar Donetsk Oblast. The Washington Post reported this with reference to the Ukrainian military. According to the Washington Post, the Ukrainian army used to have a significant advantage over the numerically superior and better armed Russians in terms of internet connection via Starlink terminals, but the Russians now use it as well. Starlink's illegal terminals let Russians use satellite internet to increase coordination during assaults, launch more drone sorties, and strike Ukrainian troops with precise artillery attacks. A prohibition on the sale of American electronics to Moscow includes Starlink terminals, which allow commanders to monitor the battlefield in real time using drones and provide secure communication between military units. According to the Ukrainian military, there is a booming illicit market for selling Starlink terminals to Russian soldiers on the front lines, and their proliferation has played a significant role in Russia's recent successes. Six Ukrainian soldiers and officers from separate units in Donetsk Oblast told the Washington Post that Russia has closed the technology gap, making its forces more cohesive and increasing the frequency and accuracy of attacks. An officer from the 72nd Mechanized Brigade, which had been defending the Volodar area since 2022 and was recently forced to retreat, highlighted Russia's deployment of the Starlink system as well as a lack of troops and weapons as contributing factors to Volodar's surrender. According to the Washington Post, Starlink terminals appeared on Russian positions throughout the year, but their impact has expanded significantly in recent months as Russian offensive forces utilize them to coordinate attacks. Ukrainian military operation reconnaissance drones near Novohrodivka reported seeing Starlink equipment in Russian positions beginning last month. The Pentagon has previously indicated that the US and Ukrainian governments are cooperating with SpaceX to prevent Russia's illicit use of Starlink terminals in occupied Ukraine. SpaceX stated that terminals are deactivated when utilized by a sanctioned or unauthorized party. The Pentagon and SpaceX declined to provide specifics about the US operations, such as how many illegal terminals used by Russian soldiers have been taken offline. Although Russian organizers and individuals are not permitted to sell Starlink, a grey market has emerged, fueled by strong demand from military and private purchasers. The Washington Post examined four of the many Russian websites allowing direct sales for the special military operation as the Kremlin refers to the war against Ukraine. The majority of terminals are sold through Telegram and start in Moscow Oblast before moving on to the front line. To activate the device, customers may supply a foreign phone number, email address and bank account to pay a monthly subscription charge, pushing suppliers to seek out people ready to lend their personal information. The Ukrainian guerrilla movement, Death to Russian Occupiers and Collaborators, claims to have identified the location of North Korean military personnel in the Russian-occupied portion of the Donetsk region. This announcement was made on the movement's Telegram channel. According to the report, three training grounds in the Mariupol region are currently active, particularly the one near the village of Sartana, which has been established 
with the involvement of the North Korean contingent. Intensive training with artillery is underway there, contradicting claims of a shell shortage. The North Korean instructors are reportedly setting up the training ground and appear to feel confident and secure at this time. Many residents of the Sartana community have begun cooperating actively with the occupying forces, according to the guerrilla movement, which primarily operates in the Azov region. As of now, other sources have not confirmed the existence of the three alleged training grounds for DPR forces in the temporarily occupied territory, including the claimed training ground in Sartana. The guerrilla movement asserts that they will do everything possible to ensure that Putin's military allies from North Korea receive a greeting from the Ukrainian armed forces as soon as possible. President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine stated that this week will be dedicated to working with partners toward gaining the strength that will ensure the achievement of true peace as reports come in of Russia embedding North Korean troops with their invasion force in Ukraine. The head of state said Russia is currently expanding its alliance with such regimes as that in North Korea. According to him, this is no longer just about transferring weapons. It is actually about transferring people from North Korea to fight alongside the Russian invasion forces. Obviously, in such circumstances, our relations with partners need to develop further. The front line needs more support, Zelensky noted. As reported earlier, South Korean and Ukrainian officials continue to identify North Korean servicemen who are already fighting on Ukrainian soil and also training in Russia for possible future deployment alongside the Russian military. Several thousand soldiers from North Korea are currently undergoing training in Russia. By the end of the year, they may be deployed to the front in Ukraine, reports the Washington Post. A representative of Ukrainian military intelligence, speaking on condition of anonymity, said that North Korean officers are already on the territory of Ukraine occupied by Russia to observe Russian troops and study the battlefield. However, the Ukrainian military has not yet encountered North Korean units that would participate in combat. The Washington Post source notes that it is not yet known where exactly the DPRK military might deploy units at the front. One option is in the border regions of Russia to free up Russian troops to take part in the fighting in Ukraine. The Ukrainian intelligence official added that this could have a significant impact. It could have a significant impact, especially if we're talking about freeing up reserves within the territory of the Russian Federation itself, the intelligence official said. According to the newspaper, some South Korean experts believes such a scenario is possible.